Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything regarding Excel. Okay, today uh, I am going to show you my basic answer to a Friday challenge that I posted last week. An Excel user in a forum had uh, submitted some data like this. Said, uh, okay, so we've got January 1st through January 10th. We have this kind of resulting data and when I graph a line chart you can see we have a couple of outliers. We have on January 4th, we have this number 2, and then on January 7th, we have uh, this number 30. And so those two data points are kind of an outlier. want to be able to get rid of those, and the only method I know of is to just come in here and click on the actual one you want, hit your delete key, and then go over here onto January 7th and hit your delete key. You can see that uh, the outliers are now gone. Their trend line has changed as well. Uh, they've got a trend line here formula as well as the R squared value. So they wanted to know how can I do that without actually going in and hitting delete on each one of those keys. So that was my Friday challenge and uh, got some great answers from some folks. Uh, one person, Pete, you can check it out on my blog. Um, he actually created the slope of the line uh, and gave you a percent difference with a pick list that you can choose to eliminate different data points uh, using the pick list and actually graphing the data points that you have uh, and figuring out that difference is really pretty cool solution. Uh, let me show you how I went about doing mine. Uh, so we've got your data here and I've got uh, a cell where I'm going to exclude the values if they are greater than um, some difference. So you can see 15 to 2 is about 13 difference and 2 to 18 is 15 difference but uh, in total it's about 13 difference in between those two. If I change this to 12, notice it's gotten rid of January 4th. Uh, and if I get down farther, so I get down to, oh, I think it's about 7, it'll actually get rid of January 7th. Now uh, let me click in here and get rid of this trend line. You can see that the data points from January 3rd are going to skip January 4th and just come right along and connect to January 5th. Same thing with 6th to the 8th. And uh, so you can do this formulaically. Okay, let's see how we went about creating this. So we have our data over here in columns A and B. Then we want to designate a cell. In this case, I'm going to do cell D3. I'm going to make this equal to our difference checker. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if cell B3 is the difference between uh, B2 and B3 is greater than 7. Uh, and if the difference between B3 and B4 is greater than 7, uh, then if both of those are true, then we want to hide this data point. If not, let's show that data point. So let's go ahead and create that formula. Um, uh, first off, we're just going to create one for the date. So we're just going to come right over here and uh, make that equal to A2. Then in column F, this is where we're going to create our formula. So we're going to type this in equals if statement, our logical test. So once again, I said we need to do an and statement. So we need to check two different things. So I'm going to create an and. And uh, I'm going to look at the differences. But since the value that I have in D3 is positive, I always want my differences to be positive as well instead of negative. So I'm going to make sure it's an absolute value. So it returns the absolute value of the number. Basically, the number. Uh, without a number sign. So um, get tab there. And now what I want to do is I want to say if B2 minus B1, since I have no value in B1, uh, that will work just fine for us. If that difference is greater than cell D3, and I'm going to hit my uh, absolute reference there. Oops. And to hit F4, there we go. So we made that an absolute reference of uh, D3. So if that is the case, um, or, uh, or the AND, so we've got the absolute value once again, and we're going to check B2 minus B3 is greater than D3, and I'm going to make that an absolute reference. So if both of those statements are true, then what I want to do is I, not, I do not want to show this point because it is an outlier. So I'm going to do the not applicable function. If uh, either one of these is uh, not uh, or greater than en enough to make it an outlier, I'm just going to show that data point. So I'm going to go here and click on B2. In my parentheses for my if statement, hit enter. So let's take a look at this uh, and uh, copy all, both of these formulas all the way down to my last data point. And look at that. It's created two different outliers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the formula evaluator up on your formula bar. You have evaluate formula as a choice. 
So we've got our formula in here, and we can say evaluate it. So if B5, which in this case is uh, 2 minus B4, which is 15, that's going to be a negative 13. Absolute value of that is 13, and that is greater than 7. Yes, that's true. So we have one true statement in there. Then it's going to check and say is B5, which is 2 minus B6, which is 18, if that, uh, which is going to be negative 16, absolute value of 16 is greater than our uh, outlier number uh, units checker. Uh, we've got 7 there, so those are both true. So since it's an and, this is true and that's true, then it, we should ultimately populate pound NA, which Excel will not chart. Uh, and so all of our data is correct. For the other ones, they don't meet that criteria. Now we can create our graph based on this data. I'm just going to highlight that, hit my insert key, go to the line chart. I'm going to do a line with markers. And uh, you can see we're pretty close here. Probably just want to change this uh, axis here. Going to change the number to a smaller date. Let's click on close there. And then I'm going to click on this line, go up to my layout ribbon do a trend line with more trend line options. And I'm going to display the equation and the R squared value and move that down so you can kind of see that there as well. And we don't need this legend over here, so I'm going to hit my delete key. And now you see we have the same chart that we wanted. The only other thing I probably want to do to make it look exactly like theirs is uh, click on your line and then do control one. And we're going to go over to our line style and we're going to choose a smooth line style. All right, so now we've got our chart here, so I'm going to just go change this value to say 99. Now 99, none of the points are uh, both 99 away from each other. Uh, so you can see my smooth line is there. And if I come back in here and I type in uh, 13, we're probably, let's go 12. We've gotten rid of one data point, uh, which was an outlier. And if we go all the way down to 7, our second outlier goes away as well. Now, uh, this is sort of a basic uh, way to get rid of your outliers by using this difference checker here of checking both the and uh, for our differences of the difference. Are they greater than our exclusion number? Now, uh, if you want a more advanced method, come back for my next post because let's go take a look and see what his chart ultimately looked like when he went and hit the delete button. So we've deleted, let me get rid of this trend line in here too so you can see it. Once he went and deleted uh, where a 2 value was and the 30 value was, notice it left a hole in his line chart. And uh, so the formula that we created over here, Excel cannot treat these pound NAs as not being there. It will try and interpolate these in a line. If this were a column chart, it wouldn't show that value. But since it's a line chart, there's just no way to get around this without creating some other formulas. I'm going to show you that advanced technique tomorrow, uh, so uh, or in my next video. So please make sure you come back to the, uh, and see that, so you can see a more advanced way to do it. But uh, this is as long as you don't mind uh, these points connecting. Certainly an easy way to create an outlier chart so that you can change your values and get rid of outliers that you don't want showing up in your chart. All right, so uh, once again, uh, please come to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com for a full step-by-step -step tutorial. You can copy the data set as well as see a download, a free download file of this example. Uh, and then also, please subscribe to both the video channel as well as my blog so you're sure to get all of our posts delivered directly to your inbox when they have a video and when they don't have a video. So thanks, and hopefully we'll see you at the next advanced session where we show you how to do it uh, in Excel with these gaps. So please stay tuned and talk to you soon.